Today I have an awesome follow along 20 minute workout that's going to build speed in your body for your golf game. So all you need is a golf club, preferably a longer golf club, um, a band, you don't have to have a double band but just at least a band with a handle, handle on it and then um, if you have the speed sticks or this is one of my new favorite toys is called the rip stick. So we're going to use this. If you don't have this, don't worry, I'll show you another method. But let's get ready for some speed. First thing we need to do is warm up the body. So we're going to use the golf club for that and much like um, a warm up before you play or practice, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to get the body ready to go. So we're going to get some rotary exercises in here. We're going to hold the club on the outside and all you're going to do is you're going to step and rotate as far as you can. So you're going to shift your weight to your right leg and then back to your left leg just turning as far as you can we're going to do that for about five or six and the warm-up should only be about five minutes you don't need much more than that okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the club over the head try and keep your arms as straight as you can i understand if you can't go too far back just go back as far as you can but try and make sure that at least the club is behind your nose so if you have to bend your elbows a little bit that's okay so what we're going to do is going to grab bend forward into a golf posture and just shift that same shift you were just doing now we're stretching out the shoulders and the chest just a little bit so we're going same thing we're going side to side we'll do about 10 each way now we're going to take the club put the handle grip on the ground put your feet wide apart and you're going to sit back and use the club for a little bit of balance don't put too much pressure because you don't want to snap the shaft but you're just going to push out on the club sit back so when you squat you're going to sit back into your heels you're going to get a nice stretch into the hips and legs so we're going to do about 10 of these pushing the club out and then sitting back into your heels just get the lower body warmed up just a little bit that's good next thing we're going to do is you're going to put the club in your right hand you're going to put your right foot behind your left leg and you're just going to turn. So these are the, the stork turns that we use to get the lower body and the hip joint warmed up. So we're going to do about 10 of those and then we'll switch sides. We're going to go 10 this way. You always want to put the club in the hand that your leg is in the air so you increase that balance. So now we got 10 of those. Now we're just going to do a lateral squat. So we're going to start with feet together. You're going to step sideways and then once you, you're going to squat down Weights in your heel, try and get your ankle, your knee and your hip all in one line. And then you're going to take the club and turn it like you're taking a, a backswing for the right hander. And then we're going to go to the other side. So you're going to shift and turn. So we're just going to go back and forth. You can make it a little bit more dynamic so you add some speed. But make sure when you step, you're going to step with that heel. So step into your heel and turn. Just like that. So now we're stretching out the hips and the upper body together. And this will get your heart rate going a little bit, get the blood flowing, and get you ready for your workout. So when it comes to adding speed and power, we have to get power from the lower body. So many golfers aren't using their lower body and they dominate with the upper body. And there's a huge speed gap there that you're not getting it from not using the lower body. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to just do some squats. So you're going to squat down, making sure you have the right mechanics. The weight stays in your heel. Feel like you're sitting back into a chair so you can use your arms for counterbalance. And we're going to squat just to about 90 degrees and then back up. So we're going to do we're going to do 15 of these and just down and back up as fast as you can. Getting the blood flowing to the lower body and getting your body used to using the legs without relying so much on the upper body. Next thing we're going to do now just like the warm-up, we're going to go lateral squat. So you're going to go down, up, and then switch sides. So it's a little, we're adding a little bit of speed, making sure that you keep the weight in your heel because the glutes and the hips, that whole area, is where you're going to get most of your, your speed and power from. So if, you, if you're somebody that hasn't been using your lower body enough, this will kind of wake up the lower body and make sure that you're using that and you have a little bit more control over it. Okay, so now we got that one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do a 180. So 
Make sure there's nothing around if you lose your balance, but you're just going to jump up and you're going to turn halfway around. So we're going to go back swing, turn our shoulders, jump up, and turn halfway around. Once you do that, now you're going to come back the other way. So we're just going back and forth. We're going to do about six times each way. And when you do this, you want to use the momentum of your arms to keep going. So you're going to keep moving and come back, move, just like that. So we're going about six each direction. And that's just getting you used to using your lower body just a little bit more. All right, now we're just going to work on a little bit more power from your lower body by adding some jump squats and some single leg exercises. So the hips are the biggest component of driving that force from the ground up. If you heard of using the ground, using the ground force reaction, the hips are the biggest component of getting that to the upper body. So what we're going to do is you don't have to squat down all the way, but you're just going to come down to about just a little bit past where you normally would. So you don't want to go all the way down to parallel, but you're going to come here and then you're just going to jump up as high as you can and land back into that squat. That's an important thing is that you absorb that landing just like you absorb the finish of your golf swing. So we're going here, up, and then landing in that squat. And then back up. So we're going to do 10 of these as high as you can possibly go each time, making sure that you get that landing and that you land soft from your toes back to your heels and keeping the knees behind the toe line. So we got 10 of those, and now we're going to do a single leg. So when we do a lunge, you always want to make sure that that back knee is going straight down towards the floor and that your weight is in your front heel. So here's what we're going to do is you're going to go here, lunge down this way, and then just a hop up. So we're going just an easy hop up. So the way it looks from the side, we're going to do 10 of these. You should feel a big burn on that front leg. And then we're going to switch sides. So we're going to go the opposite leg. Same thing, using your arms. You always want to be efficient as possible. And using your arms is a good way to get that. And we're doing 10, 9, and up. Good. So now we're getting a little bit more power. And next, we're going to go on to the separation drills. All right, now that you got the heart rate pumping a little bit, you got your legs warmed up, got some power from those, that lower body, time to grab your club again. And now we're going to slow it down just a little bit and really work on using the lower body. So the biggest part is when you use the lower body, so if you're turning your lower body, you want the upper body to at least stay stable for a little bit. So in that transition, when you get from the top, going here with your lower body first, you're going to get a ton more power and even get it on a better plane than a lot of that I see my clients are coming this way and they're coming over the top, but by getting that lower body going, you drop it on plane better. So here we go. So we're going to put the, the grip end down, holding onto the top of the club. And here you're just going to turn your lower body left and then back to the right. When you do this, you want to feel load on the inside of your leg and you want to feel, so if you're going left or you're going downswing, you want to feel the inside of your right thigh push towards your left thigh. We're turn, and then turn back. Turn through, turn back. We're going to go about 10 to each side. So we're really working on that torque. And you want to make sure, keeping the weight on the inside of your right thigh, if you're a right-handed golfer on the backswing, and then letting it go out to your left side of your heel on the left side. So we've got 10 each side there. Now, one of the biggest things that I see is when clients can't get their arms high enough and it's easy to turn when the club's here, you can make a good turn, but when you got to add the arms in, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So what we're going to do is you're going to take the club, put it on the top of your hand, and all you're going to do here is push. You're going to push as hard as you can with your bottom hand, getting a big stretch in that right armpit and chest area. That's going to help you get your arms just a little bit higher. Then we'll switch sides, doing the same thing. So you're going to turn, push, and stretch that left side. So we'll do, we're going to do three of these each side. So we're turning, stretching, holding for about three seconds. 
and then push, turn, make sure that lower body turns as well. And we'll do one more. We're going to push the bottom hand. <coughs> Good. And then last one on this side. We're going to push up and get that big stretch and that shoulder turned. And then now we got to get the lead arm stretched. So we're going to go underhand here towards the club head, opposite hands over. You're going to flip it, and now you're going to turn and push up with the bottom hand and get that left arm straight and push. Then we're going to switch. So we're going to go this way, and then same thing going here. Get that left, that right arm straight so you can get that big finish. We'll do it again here. One, two, three second hold. Flip it. Three second hold. One more. And if you guys are following along, you should start to feel your body loosening up a lot in rotation. And also, you get a little bit of sweat going in your, and your heart rate up from those lower bodies. Now, we're going to work on some rotary power. All right, for rotary power, all we need to do is we need resistance and we need to move fast under control. A medicine ball is great, but I know most people don't have medicine balls at their home or um, a wall they can slam it against. So we're going to use a band for this. And you want to anchor the band. A lot of these bands now, you can anchor them right to the doorway. So you can anchor in different spots. For this exercise, we're just going to anchor it right to the middle part. So right about chest height. And what we want to be very conscious of is that we get the lower body to move either with the upper body or even a little bit in front. We don't want to see this. And a lot of times I see with my clients, I have a saying is head go, I go. So every time they're like, oh, and their head's really turning. But we really want to work on that cervical spine, that upper back, where the head is staying there while the, ro the shoulders continue to rotate. All right, so those are three things to really look out for. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the band, grab it with your inside hand. So your right hand, if you're facing this way, is going to hold on to it. You're going to put your left hand over the top. Now, what we're going to do is you're going to make a triangle with your shoulders and your hands, and your belly button is going to follow that triangle. So it looks just like this. You want to make sure that you keep your lower body active. So you're staying in, we'll call it the box. You're staying in the box. If I do two straight lines down to my toes, I want to stay in here. I don't want to do any of this where I'm getting outside of that box. So we're going good posture, rotate. So we go a couple. I like to do about five where you're under control. And then for the last five, we're just going to move fast. So you're going to move fast to the left, control it on the way back. So we're going fast, just like that. And always, you want to do both sides. So we're going to switch around. We're going to go same exercise. So we're going here, fast. You can actually get a couple in if you need to that aren't so fast. And then we're just going to go fast. We're going to go 10 to 12 reps. And the main thing is, this is getting you to use some resistance and move fast under control. If you feel like you're out of control where you're pulling your head or you're really sliding, then just slow it down, take it easy, and go back until you have good form. Okay, next rotary exercise. We're going to anchor it low. So you want to go as low as you can to the ground. And now we're going to same exact hand position here, and you're, all you're going to do now is you're going to squat just a little bit. So if your driver stance here, all you're going to do is just squat. And you're going to sit back into your heels, so you're going to squat to start. And then from here, we're going to go drive up with your left leg while this stays where it is. So you're driving up, and you're just going to drill that. So we're going to go five reps just driving up. You're going to drive up with both legs. So we got about five reps, and now we're going to drive up and pull. So we're driving up and then pulling. Again, remember, same thing as the first exercise. You don't want to dive with your head, and you don't want to pull like this. You want to use the lower body to pull and then drive, drive up with your hands. So we're pulling, keeping your arms as far away from your body as you can, and driving up. You do 12 to 15 of those. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So we're, now we're grabbing with the left hand. You're going to drive up. Feel that motion. I don't care if you're right-handed or left-handed. You always want to stay balanced. So you're driving up. And then once you get it, 
Let's go 15. Up, drive, up. Just like that. That is a great sequencing exercise for you to do, and it's also going to teach you really how to drive up with those legs and get that, that whole momentum into the core and arms. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to swing fast. And if you have the super speed, those are good. This is my favorite um, speed trainer now. It's called the rip stick, and it has the weights right here. So you can just take them out, and then all you have is one club, and then you can take the weights out, make it heavier or lighter. If you don't have this, if you don't have a speed stick, you could always just flip the head, hold on to the head part of the, 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 uh, your driver or your three wood, and just use that as the same thing. The idea here is we want to swing light, and we want to swing fast. And you want your body to learn how to do that. So the best way to do it is by swinging much lighter than your actual driver. So what we're going to do, we're going to do three different moves. I took all the weights out of the rip stick, so now you'll hear a whistle when it swings, which is kind of it's kind of cool too. So it just makes sure you're going you're going fast, and it has a counterbalance weight here. And you, if you don't want to use that, you can let go of it or take it out. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, don't let go of it. But you can just take it out and not even have it in there. I like to use it just because it helps me to feel the release of my hands, which is a problem in my swing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go feet together, and then you're just going to swing. If you have a problem, like you're falling all over, you have balance, you can go a little bit wider. But this is a great exercise that just gets you to feel staying on plane with your upper body. So you're taking the lower body out of it a little bit. We're going to do five, five swings going as fast as you can. And then we're going to change our grip. This is important. Make sure you change your grip to right hand up. And now we're going to go the other way. So we're just going to go back. Same thing. Just trying to feel that swing as fast as you possibly can. We'll go five times. Good. Now that you've done five of those, we're going to take a regular swing. So all you're going to do is set up like you have a driver. You're going to go back, back to the top of the backswing, and then really feel that same motion. So you're getting your lower body, just like the band move we just did. You're coming up. So you're going to go here, and then swing all the way as fast as you can to a, you want to really get to a controlled finish. But you want to make sure that you're getting all the way to that finish side. If you're somebody that has trouble getting your finish side, you can always, always just step out of it and just kind of step through it. Or another thing you could do is hold, hold your finish for five seconds. That's going to get you balanced and over to that left side. Okay, now that we've done those, we're going to do the same thing. Other side, take it back, swing it through, making sure, again, even trying to use your lower body with that. We'll go five swings there. Next thing you're going to do is start with your feet together. So you're going to start feet together. You're going to step. As you step, you're going to take it back. So we're going here, take it back, and then swing it through. Again, making sure you get all the way to that left side. So we're going feet together, take it back, step through. We're going five of these. Good. Two more. Step. Swing. Again, always trying to use that lower body. We'll go to the other side. Switch your grip. Here. Back and through. Again, nice big swing. Nice big finish. Keeping your head down. Again, there's no ball to hit, so you can swing hard. Get your body under control and used to swinging fast. That's the idea here. All right, so that is 15 to 20 minutes. If you're feeling good, go through it two times. We cover the warm up, the lower body power, some sequencing drills, getting that separation between your upper and lower body, and then some rotary power drills, and then putting it all together with either a speed stick, or you could do those same drills that, that I just did with the rip stick as and with the, with the shaft of your club. So you just here, and then just swinging it. 
like I said before, you want to be able to swing it as fast as you can and under control. And the more you practice that, the better it's going to lead and take to the golf course. So two to three times a week, that program, I will guarantee you're going to add some yardage to your driver, add some control to your iron shots, and just be in better golf shape overall. Hope you enjoy that, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for watching this video. You might like the ones over here if you like this one. And don't forget to subscribe below and comment down below and let me know if there's anything golf specific that you're working on that you'd like to see a video for. And hey, share this with your friends because I know they could use it too. We'll see you on the next video.